Hello and welcome to the S Reed Beds, where we tell you about our work with uh, Reed Beds Vertical Floor Modulated Aerobic Systems to treat biological, chemical and often mineral pollutants in wastewater. All wastewater systems, treatment systems, use bacteria in the breakdown of the biological components. This is true of sewage works, this is true of tanks, package treatment systems, it's also true of reed beds. And what we really need to know is uh, what's the daily volume, what's the population on site, what's the maximum daily volume that's going to go through the system. Uh, we also could do with it on the slow. Our systems are vertical flow, in the top and out the bottom. So, uh, we put it in the slope will be fine. Where the land is flat, then we need to uh, catch a, the, the, the outflow from the septic tank into a manhole, and then we can pump it into the reed bed, and then it can go. We also need to know where the outflow is going to go, whether it's going to go to a land soak away area, or whether it's going to discharge into a stream or a river. Sometimes discharging directly into a freshwater system is not allowed. And so that's why we uh, put in this idea of a living soakaway. It's an area of soakaway where you, uh, that's the distance from the freshwater system, so that the final discharge from the reed bed is technically going to land and not directly into the wa water system. We could also we also need a septic tank or a settlement tank or a cesspit. The existing system is working fine, it probably it often work, discharges into an area of soak away where it's simply gone black and stinky because there's nowhere else for it to go. The land's all wet and it's, there's a backup and all sorts of stuff. But we can usually break into that and as long as that tank continues to break, settle the, separate the solids from the wets, then the wets can go to the reed beds and the solids can stay in the tank. That would be fine. Often uh, people would like to think that a new tank system might be needed. It's not necessary often uh, because the existing system can as long as it works that's fine and sometimes new is not always better it's often cheaper and it, it, it can often be a disappointment have a look at the different pages on the website you'll see uh, pages showing you how clean is clean you'll see pages showing how, what the rebeds look like when they're first planted, when they become established, what they look like in winter, what they look like in summer. There's a site on the internet that says that reed beds don't work in winter. This is absolute rubbish. Our first reed bed was put on in the Pennines, a thousand feet above sea level, and it was in the January we measured the 99% reduction in ammonia, nitrates and phosphates. We did a, a system out in the Czech Republic, 3,000 feet above sea level. And in the winter, um, which is minus 15 to minus 30 degrees C, and uh, it continued to flow. There's a picture on the site of Yarek with well, the yellow stuff going in and the white stuff coming out, obviously. Uh, but that's what really happened, of course, as the snow formed a thermal blanket over the, surface, on, over the reed bed. But the reed bed continued to flow and ha continued to be effective. Uh, again, what happens, what affects the reed beds? can affect the tank systems and can affect the sewage works in the same way. The, the bacteria don't miraculously fail in reed beds and work in sewage works. They work in all of these systems. Um, anyway, what the, the, because it's a vertical floor reed bed, goes in the top, comes out the bottom, there should be no standing water and therefore there's no smell. And I, I can take you to some of our systems that has been in the 14, 17 years. And I could stand in the middle, and if I didn't tell you what you stood in, you'd have no idea there were sewage treatment systems. And many of these have had hundreds of, uh, 20 tonnes of, of, of waste water going through every day, particularly in the summer. Hmm. So have a look at the, also the pages of the sizes and prices. Our sizes and prices just list exactly what you, what you need. And it lists exactly the size you want and what the price you expect to pay. There should be no hidden pr charges if the rays were pointed out straight away. We would like to make a site visit, but we want to avoid making wasted journeys. Uh, we work from Leeds, so obviously making a journey to Cornwall is, is very nice. But if then people decide to change their minds, then that's a wasted journey, a waste of time, a waste of it. If we can decide, you know, you can send some photographs, 
There's one lady put a video up on YouTube. We can see the site, see what it is. We can make our proposal. And when you want us to read bed, come and let us know. Let's come and have a... Then we can make a site visit. Then we can sort it out when it's going to be built. But we'd like to avoid making wasted journeys. I think it was one year we made 75 wasted journeys, which, which is a bit too much, really. Anyway, have a look at the sizes and prices, have a look at the other sizes and parts of the site. If you have any problems, look, the phone number's on there, the landline, the mobile, the email. Get in touch. If you have any questions, ask, 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 ask. We're always there to help you out. I'm always happy to help. And we've helped many people, hundreds of people, over the last 17 years. All right? Thank you very much indeed. Enjoy the site. Thank you.